A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into the desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like ore frost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify 
in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learn Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. <clears throat> and when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered them, Amen, Amen. I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, what sign can you do that we may believe, see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So. Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, Whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. So as families gather around dinner tables, as they have for millennia, there is a phrase most often uttered more than any other phrase. When the family gathers around, the children gather around, and the phrase is not, thanks, Mom, for making dinner, or thanks, Dad, for preparing this, or 
wow, what a beautiful table you've set, or aren't I happy that you've done all this work? No, it's none of those things. The most often uttered phrase, I think, in all of human history is, they gather around the table, the kids look at it, and they say, what is it? <laughs> what is it, and what are you trying, what healthy thing are you trying to sneak in here under this covering of maybe, uh, you know, tater tots or something? And, and uh, they're curious, what is in front of me? And when we think about that phrase, when we're trying to figure out what something is, you, you kind of have three, three levels of engagement. First is, what is it? What, what in fact is this thing that's in front of me? I don't quite know what it is. And so then you get an explanation. That's kind of the second level. Now, now we're going to explain to you what this is. Okay, then there's the, the third level of, am I going to willingly engage with this for my benefit, if it is in fact a benefit? So. First, what is it? Second is informed. And then the third is, okay, what am I going to do with this? Am I going to actually entrust myself here? And that's, that's where the children of Israel were in the, in the first reading. They're hungry. They need provision. And God meets them in that place to meet their immediate physical need. And as they engage with, with the manna in the desert, they just look at it and go, what is this? What, what is it? And and that's actually what the word manna means, literally, is what is it. So they just named it, what is it, for the rest of all eternity. And, uh, and what they were engaging with and learning to trust is God's miraculous provision for them. And did you catch it in that first reading? He said, I'm going to provide this for them to test them to see if they will obey my commandments. So God was providing for them and giving them correspond, a corresponding invitation to trust in his commandments, to walk in obedience to what he has given. So we fast forward to the gospel today. And we've been in John 6 for a while now and we'll be there again next Sunday as we get deeper into the understanding of the Eucharist. But Jesus has been slowly warming them up to this discussion. So the people are in a similar place that they were in the Old Testament. They're hungry. Last week, the feeding of the 5,000. They're following Jesus again, and he says at the beginning, he says, listen, you're, you're not here because you saw a miraculous sign. You're just here because I gave you bread, and you're looking for more food. And then he gives them this invitation. Don't labor for the food of this world, the food for just for the stomach. Labor for the food for eternal life. And those Jesus was talking to in that day were very much in the same place of the children of Israel. They're, they're at the what is it stage as they look at Jesus. What is it? Or what is he? Or who are you? What, who is this person? What are you inviting us to? And they don't really understand. And Jesus in this section, he is unpacking them more of who he is and why he has come and what his purpose is. And he says, don't labor for that food that is just passing, but labor for that food that endures to eternal life. So then they ask the next natural question. Well, what on earth is there that we could do to do the work of God? What, what is it that we're supposed to do? And he gives them the response. This is the work of God, that you would believe on him whom he has sent. So they're moving through those three stages. Like, first the what is it? Who are you? What is this? And now they're getting more information, and now they're getting the invitation to entrust themselves to Jesus. And he goes on to say, listen, it wasn't Moses that gave you the bread. It was God that gave you the bread from heaven for your ancestors. And he says, listen, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Come to me and you will never thirst and never hunger. And it's in this moment that they are being invited to entrust themselves to the lordship of Jesus Christ. They're being invited to surrender to the lordship of Jesus Christ. 
Now, they're still trying to wrestle with what does that mean, and that's understandable as they're getting the slow revelation of Jesus. But when you go through John's gospel, it is dripping with the focus on eternal life. Why does Jesus come? It is for eternal life. The one guarantee all of us have is in this life, we will all encounter that thing called death, and we will exit this life. You get to John 3.16, the most famous Bible verse, right? For God so loved the world that he sent his only son that you might believe and have everlasting life. You get over to, to John 5. Jesus is talking with the folks there, and, and he says, listen, you, you study the scriptures, which is good. He said, but what you fail to realize is they testify about me, and you study these, but you're stopping short of coming to me. They testify about me. It's the invitation to come to Jesus. You get into John 14 where Jesus is at the Last Supper saying that I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to God the Father except through him. So all that Jesus is doing is ordered towards getting us to heaven. And he gives this invitation this bread you're looking for, this thing that you think you're looking for, is me. It's not facts about God. It's not data points. It's not information. It's, in fact, an encounter with a person. He says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. And you're thinking, man, I'm hungry and thirsty all the time, physically and spiritually. And this is the invitation that Jesus is giving. Are we willing to surrender ourselves to the lordship of Jesus Christ? Because he doesn't say anyone who just comes and hangs out at church will never thirst again. Anyone who uh, reads enough data points so they can explain the incarnation and transubstantiate the Eucharist will never hunger and thirst. No, he says, it's those that come to me who receive Jesus, who believe in faith. And in that, he's giving us that invitation to surrender ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It's when you and I put that faith into action in all aspects of our life that we say yes to Jesus in my thoughts, in my words, in my deeds, in what I listen to, in what I look at, in how I speak to others, and to my spouse, my coworkers, my friends, that annoying neighbor, in how I talk about politicians and the president, and how I speak about others behind their back, in front of their back, in what I do in all aspects, when I surrender those areas of my life to Jesus Christ, that's where you and I find the satisfaction where we will never hunger and never thirst. And this will culminate next week in our deeper understanding of the Eucharist and what Jesus gives us in the Eucharist in that place. But right now, again, Jesus is leading up to that. And getting us focused on him, coming to Jesus. So for all of us, we're in that place of what is it? Then God unpacks a little bit, for, a little bit more for us. Here's what this is. Here's who Jesus is. And then the third piece is for us to accept or reject that invitation. Will I surrender my life to the lordship of Jesus Christ? And in there find the true peace, the true fulfillment of life in Christ, where we don't hunger and thirst anymore, but Jesus is that satisfaction for us. So my prayer for you and for me as we approach the table of the Eucharist today, that the Holy Spirit will be putting his finger on your heart. He's putting it on my heart right now. I'm, 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 I don't uh, escape this. St. Drake, what part of your life are you needing to surrender more fully to me? What part am I hanging on to? Because as we come to receive the Eucharist, we're receiving all of Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And the Lord is asking for us to bring all of ourselves to him, not keeping some part reserved. Um, so my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will be speaking to us of what we need to more fully surrender so that we will find not only satisfaction in this life, but find what Jesus ultimately was coming for, and that is, in fact, eternal life, because he wants to spend eternity with you and I, 
spend eternity, yes, with you and I for eternity. Amen? Amen.